Let's talk now about those who sit on the throne in which judgment, judgment was committed. It says in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, it explains that John saw thrones that were set up and judgment was committed to those that sat on those thrones. In Revelation chapter 9, which we again say is a more enhanced version of that, it explains how in Revelation chapter 9, verse 7, that the shape of those locusts was like horses prepared for battle and on their heads were crowns of something like gold. Anyone who owns a piece of gold jewelry or has a gold something or the other, you will know and find out that gold, before it comes out in its final form, it goes through immense refinement. It goes through immense heat so that it can um, get out all the impurities in it. And so What's happening is that it's describing a type of people who are going through a type of persecution who also have tendencies to take out what they're going through on the people that they love, the people that they work with, the people that they go to church with, their friends, their partners, whatever it is. There's a lot of things that we go through in life that test us. But what we have to realize is that we are going through a time of testing to get out all the impurities so that those impurities can be exposed and expelled. And it also continues to say in verse seven of Revelation chapter nine, that their faces were faces like men. Now, so we have the locusts who have the crown of gold on their head. And we, we also talked about what the gold represents, but to even bring it into further uh, clarification, we're going to look at what is considered as those who judge. Who, who are these people that sits on thrones and wear these crowns of gold that are judging? We need to find that out. Let's go to Romans chapter 14, because Paul starts to break down who's considered as strong in the faith versus who is considered as weak in the faith. And starting at verse one, it says to receive one who is weak in the faith but not to disputes over doubtful things. But verse two says, for one believes he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. So I'm sure maybe you've met somebody that says, look, I don't eat pork, man. And anybody who eats pork, they are unclean. They eat unclean. You are what you eat. And God does not like people who eat pork because the pork is the devil's food. It's unclean. It's in the Bible. You can't do that. Anybody, and I'm just using that as an example. But it also says in verse two, for one believes that he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Verse three says, let not him who eats, who eats just anything, despise him who does not eat. And let not him who does not eat do what? Judge him who eats. For God has received him. Again, those people that say, I only eat this, or I only go to church on uh, Saturday because Sunday is the devil's day, and it says, and I can show you proof, blah, 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 blah. Those are the people that when they see other people doing outside of what they believe God is saying not to do and so on, those people, Paul is saying, is considered as weak, and those are the kind of people who will turn judgment on those that are more free, okay, that just eat anything. And we're going to see why God regards those people as free. So it says in verse 4 of Romans chapter 14, who are you to judge another servant? To his own master he stands or falls Indeed, he will be made to stand for God is able to make it stand. Everybody is uniquely formed and uniquely has different intolerance levels. I did a video last year at some um, titled Thou Shall Not Eat Anything Unclean. And the gist of that video was to say that we all each have intolerance levels. And it's not fair that if you have an allergy to peanuts, let's say, that you make you try to convince everybody not to touch that peanut because of your immune deficiency or spiritual immune deficiency, okay? 
So that's basically what Paul is saying. In verse 5, he says one person, here we go again, esteems one day above the other, and another esteems every day alike. Let each one fully be convinced of in his own mind. Verse 6 says, he who observes the day observes it to the Lord, and he who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. So you're starting to see the difference between those who are considered free in the Lord and those who are considered in bondage, or those who are considered alive in Christ and those who are considered dead in Christ. Once again, in verse 6, it says, he who observes the day observes it to the Lord, and he who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, and for he gives God thanks. So the free person, the reason why God continues to bless that free person who just eats anything and eats everything under the sun is because before he or she eats, they give thanks. You ever ate, sat down at a meal and before you um, ate the meal, you give thanks for provision? So it's the same thing that Paul is saying, all right? So verse 7 of Romans 14 says, For none of, none of us live to himself, and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. For example, let me give you a perfect example. There are people, um, especially in the Christian community, that are staunch against taking the you-know-what, the medicine. Because they say the Bible says that it's the mark of the beast. And if you take it, this is what's going to happen. There are other people that are in the Christian community that say, this is actually a blessing from God. I've heard somebody say that this, this medicine is actually a blessing from God. So we don't, but each side is, is, is their intention is to serve God. And therefore, God is being honored on both sides. And he's the God, as we will read here. He said in verse nine, for this end, Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. It goes on to say in verse 10, but why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? Why does the person who took the medicine um, look down on the person who did not take the medicine as, yo, you unclean? And why does the person who did not take the medicine look at the one who took the medicine as someone who actually is unclean because they took something that will poison them. So he says, for this to this end, Christ died for both because in 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 our hearts we're all looking to please the Most High. We're all looking in our own rights to please the Most High. Okay. Verse ten says again, but why do you judge your brother, or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And it says in Matthew chapter seven, judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but you do not consider the plank that's in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look at the plank is in your own eye. You guys are hypocrites, it says in verse five. Hypocrites, first remove the plank from your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Because sometimes the plank that is in your own eye distorts what you are seeing and you think you're seeing a speck that's in your brother's eye, but you have a plank telling you or, or giving you a perception that there's something wrong with someone out there when in fact it could be something wrong with you. So you first have to deal with the way you're seeing things. Jesus said in many instances, repent or change the way you're seeing something or change the way you are examining a situation or person or a place or thing. So as you can see, it is not necessarily speaking of the kings and municipalities on the earth. It might be in, in those times, but the spirit of it is talking about a type of narcissistic behavior, an exalted behavior that will compel you to look down or look up at people and say, ah, if they're not like me, I don't want to associate or have anything to do with him or her. Once again, I'd like to thank you so much for tuning in and watching the third part of the 1000 years millennial reign with Christ. If you have enjoyed this message, please feel free to like, subscribe, and share this with a loved one. Once again, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one.